Well, this week we're continuing with our experiment. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> it's the stream experiment. We're just doing this little <laughs> test section because we've got three streams to do on the logging railroad. And we want to get it to looking something like this. <laughs> right, we're either logging off or we're streaming, it seems. This is this is what we're we're heading for this week, is to try to get the whole test section to, to this section. But here's the cut bank. There it is. And I, I like the way the cut bank is working. And um, I'm, I'm happy with the entire experiment, frankly. So far, so good. So far, so good. Now, here's a product that we wanted to test this week. Steve uses this extensively in his scenery and his structures. It's Golden Pastel Ground Textured Acrylic Primer. Oh. That's a lot to say. It is. We just bagged a, a bottle off of Amazon, but they use this as a, as a base coat when doing uh, pastel drawings, which he does. And one day he just thought, I wonder if that would work for stone on the side of my new building. And he smeared a little of it on there, and it was brilliant. Hey, canvas, stone, it works. But see, that's why we test. That's why we make mm -hmm. things like this little test section. We want to find out how these things are going to work. So I bagged a bottle of this on Steve's recommendation. And because it's acrylic, you can mix acrylic paint with it and color it. Why do you have popcorn per kernels? Well, I was having some popcorn. I see. It's not part of the experiment. <laughs> Don't mix that. <laughs> anyway, I'm applying it here to the cut bank to see, and and if you don't have any color in it, it drives perfectly clear. Steve said you can just make this if you want to by using Mod Podge and really fine sand, but it has to be really, really fine sand. But anyway, it, it goes on easily over the pink foam and it covers up the pink foam. And most importantly, it gives the pink foam a sandy, gritty, uh, stone-like texture. Right. Uh, which also, uh, functions as a primer if you're going to put anything else over the top of it. Which I intend to do. Go for dirt. Go for dirt. <laughs> Doesn't it look sort of like the, the nuclear test site in Nevada? It does. Or the surface of the moon. This is what's left of Steve's lawn. Oh. Yeah, the golfers have gotten a hold of it. Oh, no. But just like the squirrels of Echo Canyon, these little critters really separate the dirt out into the finer particles, and so that it makes great scenery. And his soil is a lovely, rich, dark soil, and I thought that'll be really nice. So I, I bagged about 100 pounds of golfer dirt, and now I, I need to separate out the finer particles from the heavier particles, and, and they're both going to get used. Yes. But right now I'm mostly after the, the finer particles. So I'm, I'm using a kitchen strainer here, and a pretzel bottle. <laughs> It's not my kitchen strainer. <clears throat> no, or it's a, it's a special strainer for the occasion. And I ate the pretzels, so there you go. There but it is. It neatly separates this stuff out into the fine fine dirt, which is this is the stuff I need for the test, and then the uh, the more coarse stuff is going to be used somewhere else. So I'm not throwing the coarse stuff away. Oh, we don't throw uh, anything away. Well, I could throw it in the begonias, but no, I'm gonna. This is this is other scenery material. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna be used in a different way in a different place. Yes. I have to take the sticks out of it. Maybe it'd be more fun to leave them in. Well, they do add a certain uh, woody quality. Exactly. Nature. Notes notes of wood, as the wine people would say. Yes. Moving on. <laughs> so I mixed some of the finer dirt in with the pastel ground. Because uh -huh. Steve said you can do that, and so I'm applying that directly to the pink foam. Of course, ruining the throwaway brush in the process. Once that stuff starts to set up, it hardens in the brush and the brush is ruined. So I'm using a throwaway brush here, and uh, pretty soon the brush was just hard as a rock. Now one problem that immediately came up was that this melted plastic left over from the acetate etching really isn't held on there. And I, I thought it was well stuck in place, but as soon as I started to apply this material to it, it was coming loose all over the place. Oh, wow. Uh, and again, this is why we test. Oh. But now I realize this stuff is just barely holding on there. So if you're going to use acetone uh, to etch your pink foam, then the next thing you have to do is peel away all of the melted plastic or it'll just come loose on its own. That could be fun, though. <laughs> well, I, this looks like <laughs> kale chips. Yes. And it tastes like them, too. Oh, uh, dear. Yeah. 
Now, I decided that it, since it ruined the brush, and anyway, I think I get a better quality uh, of, of mud here if I just finger paint it. Well, that's always good. I noticed that a bristle from the destroyed brush has gotten on the loose in there, too. I'll have to get some tweezers and, and rescue that thing out of there because it... Well, now that it's buried, it doesn't look quite so bad. But anyway, this is the best way, I think, to apply this stuff is just finger painting it in and work it down into the pink foam. A, you're going to ruin the brush, but B, and much more importantly, it looks better. That's right, except on your fingers. Well, it washes <laughs> off reasonably easy and skin regrows every few years. So anyway, I got the... I got the whole thing done here. Uh, I left a section without any color or dirt just to see what that would dry like, and it, and it dries perfectly clear. Uh, and so actually what I did then is come through and apply a second coat. There you go. And at this point, that looks like that looks dirt. Real. That it looks does. like a dirt channel running oh, down I'll through say. there. I'm very impressed and very happy with it. And, and the golfers are proud. Yes, they, they've got their role in it. Yes, they, they have. <laughs> They could be proud of this, but it works really well on the cut bank. Um, we're going to end up covering up all this stuff on the bottom of the river because it's going to be rocks and mud down there. But again, we're just testing and I wanted to see how that would, would work. But for a dirt road or or just a washed out river channel like this, it, it looks great. It does. I'm, I'm thrilled. Now I had an idea to take the rest of the test section and just put a coating of the, uh, the pastel ground directly on it just to see uh, if it made a, a more suitable base for other materials because sometimes things will attack the foam or just not want to stick to the foam. So I tried applying this just sort of as a primer. Right. And it dried to a perfectly clear, super, super hard coat on there, uh, which came back to haunt me a little bit later when I decided to add a pond and you have to cut through that section. And actually it turned out to be really, really rugged. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, the next product I wanted to test is this sculpt -a mold now, Steve uses this religiously, uh, and as I was watching him work with it, it reminds me of celluloid, which we all know I use a lot of. And uh, it looks like celluloid, uh, seems to behave like celluloid, mm -hmm. and uh, it's like, well, I'm not sure why I'm not using celluloid, but everybody swears by sculpt -a mold So I thought, okay, I'm going to try sculpt -a mold So I, I bagged a bag. Bagged a bag. <laughs> Mixed it up, and I'm looking at that going, well, let's sell you clay. I, you know, whatever. Uh, it's got the same consistency. It smells the same. It mixes the same. Looks like sell you clay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, fun experiment to try. Now, Steve said that uh, he colors his, and so I applied uh, the same colors that I've been using here of uh, the, acrylic, the acrylic colors, and I put a couple of daubs in there, and look what happened. Oh, nice. Rocks. Rocks. Um, and this is when I realized that the principal difference between cellular clay and sculpt mold is sculpt mold has a working time of about 10 minutes. Oh. And then it turns to rocks. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, so you got to work fast. Uh, cellular clay, I mean, it stays quite workable for like, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours, something like oh, that. Wow. The working time on this is more like 10 minutes. So it's like, well, there's a principal difference between the two right there. Now we there. have some rocks. <laughs> but we have some neat rocks. <laughs> so I decided it's, it's time now to make a smaller batch that I can work with in the allotted time. So I put just a little bit, added the color first. There you go. So that uh, I don't have to come back and add that and quickly mix that up with my water. And uh, I made it kind of a, a sloppier batch than I did before and very quickly applied that just to the very bottom of the river. Because what this is going to be is the mud on the bottom of the stream with the river rocks pressed down into that. There you go. This is just some gravel from, uh, it's a landscaping product that <laughs> we found at some place or another, but it's very small rocks. And then I mix that with some larger rocks from, you know, the backyard. Yes. And also some rocks we found in the, uh, the craft department over at Walmart. Right. 
and, and uh, pressed that down into the celluloid and then sprinkled uh, a little bit of gopher dirt over the top of the whole thing and worked that down in there, spritzing it mightily with wet water. Oh. Uh, which is water with just a drop of dish soap uh, from a really fine mister um, so that it washes the gopher dirt down into the cracks and uh, helps set things up. And then to make sure that none of my rocks come loose, I came back with highly dilute white glue. So it's about two parts water to one part uh, good old Elmer's. And then as long as everything is good and wet, uh, it's going to flow neatly down into all the little spaces and cracks and everything. I know a lot of people use alcohol instead of wet water. Uh, and I'm going to test that at some point in time. Wet water? Wet water. Water with, with a dash of soap. We always had hard water. <laughs> Mix me a dry martini. Yeah, anyway, this is wet. <laughs> For some reason, it's called wet water. Now, because everything is soaking wet at this point, it's going to have to be left uh, to dry mm. for quite a while, and then we'll see just what in the heck we've got. But uh, so far, I'm pretty impressed. And one fun thing about having the water and glue down in there is you start to see what this is going to look like oh, look once at that. the water is applied because we're going to come back and add a uh, casting resin water and and there's not going to be a lot of water in this stream it just has kind of a trickle coming down through so this is not far off from our goal and so it was kind of fun to see that right after applying the wet water i felt like applying more wet water <laughs> anyway i decided to get back to my usual product cellular clay so here's a batch of celluloid and mix that up, added some acrylic color. Again, it looks exactly like sculpt mold Difference being that this isn't going to even begin to set up for the next 90 minutes, and it isn't going to be completely dry for the next 24 to 48 hours. Oh, gee. So if you've got the time to work with, this is a, a better product because you can spend a lot of time with it. And so I was able to do a really large section, in this case, the entire rest of the test bed nice. over the primer, the, uh, the acrylic base, that, uh, the, the pastel primer that I'd already put down. But uh, looks good, looks good. And now we're gonna put uh, all of our other scenic details uh, into that. There we go. Now this is one of those pencils that we bought off of Amazon. And they're kind of a novelty pencil. Uh -huh. We ordered uh, four packages of these, got lost in the mail. What's with the mail these days? Uh, yeah, you have to go look for your stuff. <laughs> so they said after two months it was probably gone. So they sent us a new, a new package. It arrived and two days later the other package arrived too. There you go. But these are pencils, uh, the, they're just a decorative thing. That lead only goes up in there a fraction of an inch. Mm -hmm. it, it will write, but it really isn't a functional pencil. It's just a novelty. But I thought, man, those are great logs to use on model railroading. They are. I'll put a link in the description so you can find these on Amazon because they're a little bit tricky to find. Right. You know, and I think these things would work just as well in other scales. Probably. Especially O scale. I think so. That would scale out to about a two foot diameter log. Uh, I decided uh, my fallen tree needed roots. Of course. So I just went outside and pulled up a weed. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. A little scissor trimming and a little cellular clay and a little white glue and my fallen tree suddenly has roots on it. Just like what we see here in uh, September, last September. <laughs> yeah, when the wind, uh, an inland hurricane. Yeah. What, what the heck is an inland hurricane? Well, we anyway, had we had one and it knocked down something like 5,000 trees. They oh, said, yeah. uh, just devastated. You the, got to the, see the root ball on a lot of them. The neighborhood. Anyway, <laughs> there it is. here's one of the trees that fell during the windstorm. And then you made these lovely grasses. Yes. And I and we thought, you know, if we embed that into the cellular clay, it will cover up the, the hot melt glue. And it does. Look at that. Perfect. There Perfect. It is. And then we've got those little rubber plants. Yeah, those little, I thought they looked like a sagebrushy type foliage. But they're just a little nub on a plant from the plant department at Walmart. Right. And we just pulled them off. Then there's this product. This we got at Joann's. Right. And uh, everybody's doing fairy gardens right now. And so you're supposed to use this for your fairy garden. But look at that. It's just a, a what? Or your model railroad. <laughs> or your model railroad. 
but it's got roots on the bottom of it, grass on the top of it, tufts of grass growing up through fallen leaves and weeds and stuff. And it's like, score! <laughs> Are you cracking up? I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> We digress, but it looks great. It, and on top of the cut bank, I can pull the little root sections out from underneath it. And then at the back section with a pair of scissors, I can cut all the roots away. So it sits nice and flat down onto the scenery. Um, looks great. It looks real. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. I only did some small sections here. I did it in a couple of places because, again, we're just testing ideas on the real railroad might do a little bit more of it. Right. Okay, time to cross the pond now. Oh my. <laughs> or should I say make the pond. Notice I really had to gouge the heck out of it because that acrylic base, that, uh, that pastel base that we put down, is just hanging in there like grim death. Oh goodness. And so I cut it with a sharp knife and then I had to come back with a screwdriver and pry it loose and try to pop the stuff up. But uh, it turned out to be quite difficult to remove. What is this boot like? <laughs> it does look like somebody stepped on it, doesn't it? It does. That's a perfect print there. The, you remember waffle stompers? Uh-huh, uh, yeah. We yeah. digress. Anyway, that is the pond, and I was going to now use uh, more acetone uh, to etch that down and create more cut bank around the edges of it. Now that we've done that, I think for a pond, uh, in some places it might be nice to do a cut bank, but generally speaking, a pond has a more gradual edge. Usually. So maybe the acetone wasn't the best thing to use here. I don't know. But again, we're just trying ideas. Notice where I didn't get all of the uh, primer off of there, the acrylic base uh, for pastels. It's not etching it at all. You really have to clean all that stuff off or it just turns into soft gooey rubber and just sits there staring at you right it's fun to watch the acetone etch that it is it's sort of mesmerizing it is you just there and watch it you be it becomes hypnotic and then you go wait a minute it's going to go all the way to the floor and ruin yes. my project bubbling <laughs> brew but you have to you have to add a little back in and you have to go very very slowly here because suddenly it will take off and uh -huh. and pretty soon it's gone all the way through your two inches of pink foam right and the floor and, and the floor hole, and it's yeah, yeah and pretty soon there's lava coming yeah, up to, it's, it's it's bad. it's like a reactor meltdown it so. is Anyway, we digress. The The pond is coming right together, and now I just sort of have to let this bubble and froth and finish etching. And then, again, to remember to pull up all of this plastic material, because it's going to be in there not really stuck in very well. So after pulling that up, I mixed up a batch of clay in a muddier, lighter color. And, and coated the whole bottom of this. And I had to build up a fairly thick layer in places again because I did a cut bank all the way around. And then I shoved rocks into that and then came back with my brush and just painted uh, some green moss. Ew, Ew, that looks a little too real. <laughs> I can almost smell it. Yeah, yeah, but again, it's, it's a super sloppy wet mess because I've been using the wet water to help set the stones and a little white glue. Uh, but once this is dried, I'm going to try pouring the Woodland Scenics uh, deep pour material over the top of this. And I think that's gonna look brilliant. And that uh, will have to be next week's show because we've sort of run out of time. Well, I have a better name for that lake. What's that? Lake nine and three quarters. Lake nine and three quarters. <laughs> Anyway, it took, uh, it took 48 hours, a little more than 48 hours for all of this to dry. And then I poured the Woodland Scenics in here. And doesn't that look great? It looks wonderful. It looks like real moss under real water oh, and stuff. it does. Anyway, that's, that's it for the test section for this week. And next week, we're going to be pouring the water and actually starting on the real railroad. Oh. Because I think our test is just about finished here. It's working. I think we've arrived. <laughs> I'm thinking of putting up a little sign right here that says uh, government test site, no trespassing. Yes, I see where there's boot camp lake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving on to other things. If you haven't been over to the channel, please pop on over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, we all know how you do that. The blue button coming up right here. 
Well, we're not sure how you found this uh, movie, this video. It's on, a video. It's a video on the internet, but we sure hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday because we're still testing logging engines. Oh, boy.